Hi, this is Dr. Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and this is Aquaponics Academy episode number two. Today, uh, we're going to discuss the history and evolution of aquaponics as a farming technique, and uh, we're going to talk about how we've gotten to where we've gotten. Welcome to Aquaponics Academy, a Bright Agrotech podcast designed to help you overcome common aquaponic issues, learn new growing techniques, and help you be as successful as you can be as an aquaponic practitioner. Whether you're just getting started or you've been growing aquaponically for decades, this podcast is for anyone wanting to design the best performing system possible. Join aquaponics expert, Dr. Nate Story, the creator of Zip Grow Towers, as he breaks down complex topics into easy to understand information. And now, here's Dr. Nate Story. The first thing to start talking about with aquaponics is, is where did it begin? How did it get started? And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to talk about here. We could go back to the Aztecs. You know, they had these awesome little floating islands, basically, uh, that they, they did agriculture on. Um, they've been all sorts of other, you know, interactions uh, of fish and plants, usually terrestrial. You know, so these are folks that are, are growing fish in ponds. and They've got, say, banana trees planted next to these um, aquaculture ponds. And it's a very loose... Um, it's very kind of a loose aquaponic uh, technique because you know, there's all sorts of other interactions there, but it's the same idea, right? They, uh, as far back as you know, the Egyptians, people were looking at fish and the waste they were producing, and uh, they realized, ah, you know, plants grow a lot better when they're grown in the presence of this fish waste. So, you know, aquaponics as a practice probably goes back a really long ways, but as far as kind of the modern practice. Um, I would say mostly uh, it's been going for the last 60 to 70 years. And um, it started just kind of as, uh, as kind of a, a phytoremediation uh, technique. So back in the day, people would have this polluted water, right, all of this fish waste in it, and they'd want to try and clean it up. Um, so this was happening with all sorts of different kinds of waste, not just fish waste, but people were looking at plants and, and looking at their needs and looking at these, these waste nutrients in the water. And most of these were, you know, solid waste, uh, either from, you know, cattle production or swine production or fish production. And they're thinking, how can we clean this stuff up and how can we make it useful in some way? Or how can we even just remove these waste nutrients so we can discharge it without killing a stream or killing this pond or this lake or this body of water? So these have all been uh, big questions that were circulating and certain people started doing research um, and looking at, at how that interaction could aid in cleaning up water. And in fact, this is how I initially got into aquaponics myself. I was looking at aquacultural operations and trying to figure out how do we clean the water from these operations? Because the way the nutrients in it are they're dilute, right? They occur in big quantities, large quantities, but they're really dilute. And our equipment is just not very good at removing nutrients that are at really dilute levels. So um, started looking at plants, and plants are great at this. Plants are amazing. You know, they can uptake these nutrients at very low levels, and they can remove them uh, many different. Um, nutrients, many different heavy metals, many different problems. They can remove them to levels much lower than we can do with conventional equipment or chemistry, which is kind of an amazing thing if you think about it. So, you know, originally uh, these folks were looking at, at aquaponics. Uh, what we would now call aquaponics is just phytoremediation, cleaning water. And then some folks were like, well, you know, if we're going to be using these plants to remove these waste nutrients, why don't we at least get some food out of the plants too? And um, people started looking at this and they realized, you know, for every pound of fish we grow, we can produce hundreds of pounds of vegetables sometimes. Um, so this can actually be kind of a, this might be something that could actually feed people. And uh, once we started going down that route, um, a lot more research started to be done. And I say a lot, you got to understand that when I first started looking into this stuff, there was just not a whole lot of research. Now, Dr. Dr. Okosi out of UVI, he was kind of the modern day father of aquaponics in a lot of senses. He put together the first really large scale system and really started pumping out the first um, batch of research. And not just like one article here, one article there, but actually a lot and a lot of information 
on aquaponics, the different interactions, how it worked, how his system worked, and um, just kind of all of these really great details that no one had had uh, put out there before. So he was kind of out there operating, and he was really the only guy operating in that space for a long time, at least producing any kind of volume of research. So beyond him, everything else was happening on a hobby or a grassroots level, and a lot of it was happening in Australia. So Australia, interestingly enough, was kind of the epicenter or the, the, the origin point, the starting point for modern-day aquaponics. So everyone that's into aquaponics today owes a lot to some of the original aquaponics folks in Australia. And there's a lot of them out there, but, you know, backyard aquaponics, uh, those folks have been really instrumental, especially early on with their forum, in getting a lot of people that were just kind of reinventing the wheel in their own backyard together um, through their forums and allowing them to really start sharing information and start learning what was going on. So in the U.S., it was not nearly as organized. All this stuff was happening in Australia. In the U.S., it was all um, basically through a listserv. So this, this funny little email listserv, and uh, there were quite a few people on it, but, um, you know, it was just not very well organized. So, you know, it's kind of interesting today. We've got tens of thousands of people that are practicing aquaponics now. It's becoming really popular. And, um, you know, it was, <laughs> it's just, it's really bizarre sometimes. But, um as it's grown, it's also evolved. So it almost all started as media-based techniques. Okay, so back in the day, especially on smaller hobby levels, everyone is using, you know, three-quarter inch crushed granite and pea gravel and all these inexpensive uh, media-based growing techniques. Well, once Dr. Rokosi came along and really started doing his research, more people started to shift to raft, um, for better or for worse. And um, a lot more raft producers got going. Um, in the states and around the world, and uh, it's continued to evolve from there. So you know we've been doing uh, vertical tower production. I developed the vertical towers for my production, um, kind of uh, in response to some of the other techniques, but also you know uh, in response to kind of plant needs when I'm really packing them in densely. So that's kind of one example of of technology that's come from this little bitty industry, and uh, has has started to really make an impact. And there are dozens, dozens, and dozens of other innovations out there like it. Um, all sorts of really neat um, plumbing supplies, you know, <laughs> the, you know, uh, solids lifting overflows, you know, used to be a term that was used in aquaculture and nowhere else. But it's really interesting now uh, how many people will refer to these traditional um, terms that were, that were traditional to say one industry or another, but really you wouldn't hear them anywhere else. And now aquaponics is, uh, practitioners have taken these words and they've combined them um, and started using them regularly as they're designing these, these things for their systems. Another really interesting thing is kind of uh, watching the industry transition from more of a hobby application of aquaponics into this kind of commercial focus. So, you know, the, the hobby version really started in Australia, but the commercial version really started to gain some traction here in the States. And um, it's been really interesting to watch People take Dr. Okosi's designs and a lot of their own designs and a lot of these um, other designs who have, that have popped up over the years and try to figure out how um, they can they can use this to to grow aquaponic product uh, fish and aquaponic plants uh, commercially. So that's kind of an interesting thing. People say, "I love doing this on a hobby level. I really want to figure out how I can make a living at it." And uh, it's, it's proven to be a really kind of interesting take on modern farming because, you know, land is not cheap, but um, for aquaponic producers, especially if they're using a really high density technique, they can grow a lot in very little space. So um, that's kind of just the background, the overview on aquaponics. And uh, it's not nearly as in-depth as it probably could be, but I don't want to bore you to death. We got a lot of really um, nitty-gritty kind of fun things to get into as uh, when it comes to system design and system management. So uh, we'll, we'll save our breath, we'll save some time here, and uh, we'll get cracking on that stuff here pretty soon. So uh, thanks for tuning into this episode, and uh, we hope you're finding these first few podcasts really helpful um, to understand kind of what aquaponics is about. And uh, be patient. In the next few episodes, we're going to start talking about the nitty-gritty aspects of system design 
and uh, nutrient management and kind of a lot of the other things that really can flummox people right as they're getting started. So um, be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Stay up to date, and thanks for being part of our aquaponics community. On behalf of everyone here at Bright Agrotech, uh, stay tuned, and uh, hopefully you'll get a lot of great, free, useful information uh, from some of the podcasts we have coming down the road here. 